The term medieval generally signifies the 10th century period spanning the 5th through the 16th centuries. And for the most part of this video, this is what this look at medieval armor will focus on. But in order to understand how armor developed over the centuries, I will also give you some background information on armor as it leads up to that period. Armor changed, evolved and improved over the medieval period and there are a few factors that had a tremendous impact on this evolution. The development of different types and more effective weapons, weapons such as swords, spears, daggers and polearms, all changed over the centuries, in part to achieve effectiveness against armor. The longbow and crossbow were very effective against varying armor types and new armor had to be developed to counter these weapons. This changing and evolving between weapons and armor were what we call now an arms race. Weapons would improve, then armor would improve, then weapons had to improve and so on. Developing in metal working skills also, as we moved out of the Bronze Age and into the Iron Age, the new ways of working with metals made stronger armor and gave armies technologies to make more effective armor. Changing philosophies and cultures these things also had a big impact on how armor changed and of course eventually gunpowder put an end to armor. Now armor before the medieval period. There are two major lines of armor that lead up to the armor in Europe through the medieval period. The first line is the classical line that came out of the Mycenaean, Alexander the Great, Greek and Roman traditions. The major materials that armor was made from include bronze and iron. The second line came out of the Celtic and Teutonic people. This is called the Barbarian Armor Line. The armor made in this line was predominantly leather and mail. Out of all the various armor types, chain mail, also known as ring mail, was the most successful and it lasted the longest. Earliest versions of this type of armor date back to the first century and this may was in use in different variations all the way through the medieval period and beyond to the 17th century. It was called chain mail or ring mail because it was made of a series of small rings that were interlocked together. This means of assembly was very effective against slicing and stabbing weapons and normal arrows. It was also very complex to make and a chainmail chest piece, often called a hauberk, could be composed of thousands of these little rings. Chainmail was in use in various forms throughout the whole medieval period in a variety of capacities. For many centuries it was very effective, but the brunt of its effectiveness was against slashing weapons. The rings that composed the mail were effective at defeating slashing weapons but were not effective against the brunt force blow of weapons such as hammers and maces. Over the centuries of the medieval period, this deficiency was minimized by adding a variety of other materials either under or over the chain mail hauberk. This could be a leather jerkin or a padded gabinson under the mail or a coat or plate and surcoat over the mail. This could get very cumbersome and while adding extra layers of padding and protection could reduce concussive damage, it still didn't keep pace with the development of weapons. In the 13th century, the mail became less and less effective, particularly because of the use of crossbows and better weapons. Armor has moved in the direction of adding various pieces of plate, either under the mail or over the mail. These were just parts like chest plates or elbow guards. This was the first move towards plate armor. A development in armor was the coat of plates, which lasted throughout the 14th century, approximately. After 1350, the use of solid breastplates came into more use. They were typically made of a solid plate in the front and a solid plate in the back called the back plate. Iron breastplates appeared as early as 1190. The most important development after the common use of the breastplate was the addition of more plate on various body parts. These included braces over the arms, greaves for the lower legs, 
and various other pressure plates for shoulders, elbows and knees. Eventually, these all evolved into the complete set of plate armor that we think of when we think of a knight in armor. In this armor, every part of a knight's body was covered with plate. And these developments of additional protection also had sub-developments. A good example of this is the demi-greaves, which covered only the front part of the lower leg. This developed into closed greaves, which went all the way around the lower leg. The 15th century was the pinnacle of medieval armor and all revolved around the knight's complete set of plate armor. In the beginning of the century, the art and craft of making complete plate armor sets developed into two different schools, the Italian and the German. Towards the end of the 15th century and beginning of the 16th century, these two schools diverged into what is considered to be the pinnacle of armor making, the Maximilian. 